Bonjour, everyone. Hi, this is Neshi Lokatz. Um, thank you for joining me this evening. I just need to make sure I got the right. Done. I did it. <laughs> Forgot to check that part. Hi, everybody. This is Neshi Lokatz. Welcome to Communications from Home. It's my weekly evening live stream, and uh, tonight's Tuesday, July 20th. Yay. It was a good day here. I hope it was by you. It was warm, warm, 86 degrees, but it was nice, nice, nice. And uh, I was so looking forward to being with you guys this evening. I tried to make a um, live stream on my personal page this afternoon, and I kind of got caught up in doing some other things and lost track of time. So I didn't make it. <laughs> so anyway, I'm so that's why I'm so glad to be with you this evening. Tonight's show, the topic... Um, is all about our shadow selves, our shadow self. And I know that there's been lots written about it and there's been a lot of videos and that sort of thing about this topic, but I wanna tell you, I wanna share with you how I got to this topic. Um, last week, I had one of my good friends on the show with me and Julie Hedges was here and she said something just kinda sat with me for a bit. And she was talking about how um, we have the opportunity to work with our shadow self during this time frame with all the astrology and all of that that's going on, right? And we talked a little bit about um, the shadow aspect of a Sagittarian, the sign, and also the Gemini. And we just briefly touched on it, but it's it caught my attention um, because I was thinking, well, you know, if we're sitting in this astrology, of um, Sagittarius and Gemini and maybe talking about our shadows would be a good thing just to bring it out into the um, into the light of day so to speak <laughs> and so you know that was one and you know I don't believe in coincidences and I know you don't either um, so when things that happen at least three times, and especially the fourth time, you know, it's like, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. This is not just a coincidence. Look at this syn synchronicity. So I was, um, watching some videos, uh, YouTube videos of some people that I follow and, um, three out of four <laughs> were basically talking about the same thing, coming at it from different directions, but it was the same thing. And I thought, oh my gosh, okay, we're, we're going to talk about the shadow self tonight. And I'm hoping, I'm hoping that it's going to be helpful and um, enlightening, okay? All right, so um, I just want to say hi to a couple people. Look who's in the house, but Julie Shumway Hill. Hello there, lady. Hey, by the way, Julie, did you get your, your high school reunion thing in the mail in the last day or two? I got mine, I think it was today. I think it was today. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking about going. Rochelle says, hello, Nishi, shared and grounded. Yay. Thank you, Rochelle. You're always a great reminder. A great reminder because I sometimes I forget <laughs> to, to ask, to request, to invite people to share the video uh, with someone else. It does two things. One, it's helpful to the other person uh, who might be looking for this kind of information. And number two, it helps star nations be in the uh, news feed a little bit more often so other people can find us easier. So thank you, Rochelle, and thank you for sharing about being grounded because that's another thing we're going to talk about tonight. Tabitha's here. Yay, Tabitha. Good to have you in the house, lady. And Clara's here too. Hello from West Dallas, she says, and I'm saying hello right back at you from Toma, Wisconsin. We're nearly neighbors by, what, three hours? <laughs> And Rob's here too. He says, I believe in coincidence. Coincidence happen all the time. I don't trust coincidence. And that's a quote from Garrick, Star Trek, Deep Space Nine. Now, if you're a Trekkie, did you even watch Deep Space Nine? I kind of did. <laughs> Didn't really follow it all that closely. Lisa's here too. Hi, Lisa. Another Wisconsinite. Good to have you here. And Julie says, yes, I got it. Got it. I I got it the last few days. Yeah, I'm thinking about going, actually. Maybe we should go together, huh? Amy's here, too. Hi, Amy. Good to have you here. So you guys ready? Should should we chat a bit about our shadow self? Yeah, shadow, our shadow self, and our soul growth. 
I know a lot of us would r rather not even pay any attention to that shadow part of ourselves. But I, I can tell you one thing that I know for sure is that, um, you know, coming from experience, from being a teacher, a spiritual teacher, coming, um, sending out questionnaires to my students who want to come and take um, a class with me, and it's a part of their welcome packet, their intake information, and I've done it myself in the past, is that we, we as light workers, energy workers, healers, sensitives, seers, in other words, all of us, <laughs> We tend to do something on those questionnaires. Whenever we get asked the questions about our strengths and our weaknesses or, um, you know, talking about um, something that we've been working on healing in our lives, those kinds of things, we tend to go toward the more positive end of things, okay? We speak of it better in more positive terms. Very rarely will we actually, if it's like on a scale of five, five, one to five, where is it on your scale? And five being the best and one being the worst, we all do like fours and fives, okay? And some of it is the truth, some of it is. But some of it is a little bit of a hedge, okay? You're hedging it, right? You're just kind of saying, well, it's I, I don't really want to say that, so I'm gonna make it sound a little bit better. And it's okay because a lot of us have done it. Sometimes it's because we don't really want to acknowledge that shadow part of ourselves, right? Sometimes. And I tell you why, for me anyway, in the past, because it's a vulnerability, right? It's a vulnerability. It's a lot of times it's connected to our ego. Yeah. And sometimes it's connected to a really deep seated heart scarring event. Right. And we don't want to go back into those memories. Now, the thing is, is that we don't have to go back into the memories. We don't have to do that. But acknowledging, acknowledging there's a shadow part of us there because it is a part of us. It is. It's just like in psychology, because you know, that's what I studied when, when I was in college. That's what I got my degree in, um, my undergrad, is that, you know, depending on what, what form of psychology that you resonated with, um, lots of times we would talk about our, our higher mind, our higher selves, right? Um, we would talk about the ego self, and we talk about the id or the inner child, right? And it's that id <laughs> that would be considered in some schools of psychology, our shadow self, okay? It's when you see an adult pitching a fit about something and, you're, and they're acting like a toddler sometimes, okay? We've all seen that. On occasion, we might even have been in that position. Um, and so, you know, the id kind of gets a bad rap, right? Okay. So as long as we acknowledge, say, I see you, that's a good start rather than, um, ignoring it or, um, denying it's there kind of thing, you know? So we're going to talk a little bit about that and what that means for our soul growth. Yeah. All right. So, um, Let's see. Deanna's here too. Hi, Deanna. Good evening to you too, lady. And Rob says, Deep Space Nine is the best in the franchise, and I rewatch the series every spiritual milestone. <laughs> well, good for you. It's kind of like how I watch Kill Bill. <laughs> talk about, talk about uh, um, really good shows, right? Lisa says, your YouTube feed is not working. It's not working again. Oh, my gosh. Sorry about that, Lisa. I thought I fixed it. I don't know what I have to do. I'll figure it out after after the show. So coming up next week, you know, hopefully it'll work. Sorry about that. Rats. Technology. Rob says, YouTube is working for me. Try and refreshing the page. If still no, restart the app or the browser. Oh, good. Thank you, Rob, for sharing that. Rochelle says, you look really good in that color. Thank you. Thank you. My orange color and my earrings. My mom made these for me years and years ago. Um, they're, they're 
pure steerings and they, they're, they're this long. I thought I'd wear them tonight. One is because we really need to listen to some things. And for me, when in dreams or anything like that, it's kind of like a symbol of clear audience, you know, clear audience. So, yeah. Thank you, Rochelle. And Rob says, shadow for me involves the water of life, the springs eternal from Aaron. Ooh. Ooh, I kind of like that. And, oops. Uh, Deanna says, love those earrings. Thank you. <laughs> Clara says, yes, it, it is. I'm watching for, um, for me also. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay. So, so much. I had to write some things down because I didn't want, there were certain things that I want to make sure that, that we touched on. Okay. So, um, I'm going to take a quick look at my notes. Um, okay. One of the things about us light workers, you know, when we kind of hedge on it a bit, um, we tend to disregard that part of ourself looking the other way and sometimes pretend they, that it doesn't exist. But those shadow elements of ourselves do exist and they reoccur from time to time, depending on what we're working on, right? We all work on ourselves a little bit at a time. Sometimes we, and we have those huge epiphanies, those kinds of things. Yeah. And I have to say that when this is how I see our shadow self, okay, that it is a part of the whole us as a whole being it's a part of us and so we can't disconnect it we can't um um disenfranchise it right we we when we ignore it a lot of times what happens is those those taps on the shoulders or those synchronicities look over there look what's going on over there right they get bigger and bigger and bigger until we can't ignore it anymore. And so for me, I see that shadow part of myself when it come when it gets so intense that I can't deny that it's there. It really is kind of like um a piece of a mystery, right? It's like a jigsaw puzzle. Because I'm being shown something that is uh directly related to my next step or another layer of understanding myself and possibly uh, balancing something out that was out of balance. Okay. So it's kind of like a hint if you want. Sometimes those hints get pretty big. <laughs> I like to take them when they're little and they're a little bit more fun too when they're smaller, when they don't take up your entire your entire um, life practically. So the shadow shadow self is a part of our whole being. Yeah. And some of us kind of call it our humanness. That's what makes us human. We're infallible, right? We have faults. <laughs> we do. We do. Our soul self, our spirit self knows everything already, right? That's why that part of us, that spirit part of us is having this physical experience. And so it's in this physical experience that we get to experience that shadow. When we're in spirit, we don't have that. It's not a part of our existence as a spirit. But when we're in the physical form, yeah, it's about our life here on the earth plane. Hmm. So I invite you to turn your attention to your shadow self. And what does that mean? What does that mean, right? So I'm inviting you to take a look at maybe the last instance, the last occurrence of a really intense, intense emotion, feeling, thought, that you would have kind of labeled a negative, right? So what am I talking about? Envy, jealousy, hate, right? In extreme impatience. <laughs> Anything that we might consider a weakness, 
right? Yeah. So even, even though we live consciously in a spiritual community, right? We, we consciously decided to live our life in a spiritual way. We're still human. And we still have those things happen occasionally or more than occasionally when we have some growth going on. Yeah. So when was the last time you felt any of those lower vibrational feelings, thoughts, emotions, and acted like they weren't there? Or you kind of elevated it a bit so it doesn't seem like it's a negative, right? Yeah. And it's okay. It's okay as long as you acknowledge it to yourself. It's okay. Sometimes <laughs> yeah, I've got so many examples. I didn't, I didn't even know which ones to use first. But I'll use this one because it's the one that popped into my head. Okay, so years and years and years ago, <laughs> I want to say, let's see, 15, probably about 20 years ago. This is the one that sticks out in my mind. Um, I was co-teaching a class. It's a feng shui class, I think it was. Yeah, feng shui, I think space clearing. It's a two-week certification course. And I was co-teaching it with uh, somebody that um, came to me and made the the request to do this co-teaching here in Wisconsin, right? And you know, and I thought about it. I thought, yeah, why, why not? You know, it'd be it'd be a heck of a lot easier to share share the workload, right? And so, <clears throat> to save money, <laughs> she asked if we could hold it in my house, and we were living down near Madison at the time, and so we did. And um, yeah, it didn't go well. There was a lot of ego involved between the both of us. It really was. Thank goodness the students still had a good class and they got out what they needed to get out of the class. But it was the afterwards that was not pleasant. And, um, you know, and I was and we had even thought of, you know, we even actually um, promoted the, in the next upcoming two or three classes that we were going to do together. And I thought, there's no way I can teach with this person. <laughs> And so, yeah, we didn't, we didn't. And I was, I tell you, I was hopping mad. I really was. You're the kind of angry that you're spitting nails practically, you know? And um, I remember talking to my spiritual team, you know, did you ever have one of those conversations with them where you're just going, I don't understand. <laughs> I don't get it. You know, why, why do I have to go through this? And, and why did you have to bring her into my life? You know, and it, it kind of playing the victim in a way, but you're also, you know, really angry that you want to be right. Mm. Ego. <laughs> and so what I clearly heard from my spiritual team, when I asked, well, how do I get through this? What do I have to do? And they said, apologize. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I can't believe I can't believe that. I have to apologize for something that happened in my house. You know, it's like, what? Okay, so I had to calm down. I slept on it. And in the morning, I got up much calmer. And I was thinking about the apology. And I'm talking to them. And I'm saying, okay. All right, I can see, I can see how I need to apologize for what I said, the thoughts I had. Okay, but I have to be, I have to be able to make this heartfelt, and so I need help. How do I get to the heartfelt apology to really mean it, so it do, it's not just empty words, right? So it took me a while to get there, but I did, I did. And I made an appointment with her, called her and said, would you like to have some tea and talk, you know? And so we did. And um, talk about butterflies in the stomach, <laughs> you know? And uh, th that's that vulnerability, 
right? And it's like, oh my gosh, okay, here we go. And so I, I was just honest with her and said, you know, um, I got some work to do. I got some work to do on my ego and I apologized. I apologized. Although in that apology, I also said that I don't think neither, either one of us is ready to work with another person in that collaborative co-teaching kind of way that we both needed to grow up. <laughs> you know? And so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's mine. That's mine. Now that was from some, some time ago, but that's the first thing that popped in my head. And so I thought I'd share it. There's others, there's others, you know, uh, where we have to kind of take that breath and think, okay, here's what I've learned from this guys is that whenever I have a very intense reaction, whether it's a thought, whether it's actual behavior, it's speech, whatever it is. And it is one of those, I'm using words I don't usually use, you know, it's like, ah, what is that? <laughs> I know from myself, this is where I have to take that pause and ask, why is this, why is this such a trigger for me? What's really there? And asking my team to help me see it with more clarity, what's really going on here? Okay. Yeah. And the thing is, is that we're always doing this. As long as we are still in a physical body, we're still growing spiritually. We're still growing. We're still gaining wisdom. And it's going to continue to happen until we take our last breath and we leave this physical body. So can we ever get rid of our shadow selves? No. But we can embrace it. We can acknowledge it. You know, and, and get hopefully get to the point was to, to actually see that part of us as a part of the whole. And not that part sitting over there, <laughs> away from us coming in to, to cause trouble, right? Yeah. And I'm going to catch up with you guys here. Lisa says, I don't remember a lot of my past when snippets come forth. They thank it for showing up to love and heal. There's a lot that hasn't surfaced yet. Maybe I'm not ready for those pieces. Could be, could be. Hey, Jocelyn, good to have you here. Rab said, about two minutes ago. Oh, I'll see. At least you acknowledge it, right? Amy says, oh, it was bad at work. Led me to dropping a 20-pound object on, on my foot Saturday. No fractures. Seen it. Oh, my gosh. Ouch. Ouch, ouch, ouch. <laughs> yes, you do. All right. So, Rochelle. Rochelle says, I've been, um, I've been human these past few months dealing with insurances, out of home owners, and trying to surrender my life insurance. They said they didn't have a record of Eric's death. That did it. Oh, I bet. Um, well, fortunately, I received the check today. Perseverance. Yeah, makes you wonder, what the heck? Why do, why do I have to go through this? Right? Um, yeah, but there must have been something in there. Something in there. Yeah, and the perseverance to see it through, right? Yeah. Yeah. So here's, uh, and Tabitha has something to say. She says, lots of recent work stuff that's pushing all my buttons. Yes. Yes. And so that shadow part of ourselves, it's the one that sometimes speaks without a filter. You know, because you're so upset with something, whether you're angry or you're scared, there's some fear in there, right? Um, yeah, it's that part of us that that says or does something very extreme sometimes. But it's all a part of our learning. It's all a part of it. So, <clears throat> So understanding our shadow self brings us to a balance point. Whenever something happens that's really out of, you know, some would say out of character or it's so intense, right, that it your reaction seems out of character for you. In fact, there's some people in your lives that would do a double take is like, what? 
can't, I can't believe she's like that or he's like that. That's not her normal reaction, right? When it's something so intense and so extreme, we really have to take a look at it. We really have to ask for help about it. And I'm talking about to our spiritual teams, right? Um, and sometimes it does take, we have to take ourselves <laughs> into a timeout. Yeah. Calm down. Talk to your team. Yeah. Sometimes the calming down takes a little while. If you ever taken a, a class with Polly Jo LeBay, <laughs> And she has you using the 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 pillows or the baton, you know, the um, pillow batons, you know, those foam things. So you're really, you know, you're hitting that that massage table pretty dang hard, getting a lot of anger, a lot of hurt, a lot, a lot, a lot out. That's our shadow self. Allowing the expression, right? Yeah. Now I I do believe in expressing our emotions in a in the healthiest way possible and doing no harm okay doing no harm to someone else or to yourself in that expression yeah you know here here's another one that just popped in my head <laughs> um i was working in um child support over in shano county at the time and it was it was after work. Um, Paul and I had been weather spotters uh, in another county that we lived in. We thought it'd be fun to to do that again in our new county, right? And so we, whenever you do weather spotting, um, volunteering, you have to take a certain class. And so we went to go take this class, and it was a room full of people. And I'm, we're sitting in folding chairs, and this lady in front of me would not sit still. She was moving all over the place and she'd stand up, she'd sit down, she's moving, 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 right? And so in order for me to see, I either had to go from one side or to the other, or I had to stand up myself. And so um, honestly, I really wanted just to reach out and smack her in the back of the head and say, sit still. <laughs> so what was that? What was that? I literally sat on my hands sat on my hands and I finally looked at Paul and I said I'm gonna go to the bathroom I'll be right back and I took myself out I didn't have to go to the bathroom I went out in the hallway walked around walked around okay okay you can do this you can do this do that pep talk right I didn't go back and sit in my seat my chair I was standing in the back of the room leaning up against the wall <laughs> uh, I just removed myself from the situation but I had to kind of go back to that when I went and got home. I thought, what was that about? What was that about? Why did she just make me want to hit her? You know, it's like, what? Okay, so sometimes others mirror to us something that we don't like in ourselves, that shadow part of ourselves. And when I had that thought, it was like light bulb moment, light bulb moment. Because in the past, that would have been me. I would have been the person that was go all excited about what I was hearing. I, I know the answer. I know the answer. <laughs> you know? I want that gold star student, right? And I thought to myself, oh my goodness, somebody at some time was sitting behind me wondering why I couldn't sit still. <laughs> and so from that point on, from that point on, I always sat in the back of the room, still asking questions and that kind of thing. But at least I wasn't, I could still be me and not, yeah, not antagonize someone else, number one. But it put me in a position where I could actually see from a different perspective, what was going on in the room, and sometimes what the teacher was actually, or the yeah, the teacher was actually doing, right? So I had to take a look at that mirror that was sitting in front of me. <laughs> so sometimes someone else plays a part, a role for us for that. Yeah. And 
if not out of character at all. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I say, so Julie says, uh, people I deal with at work often make me think I need to get out of this place. Yeah. Yeah. So if we can, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not, but maybe if you, if you can take a, a wider look at that, a wider perspective, see what role are they playing for you? You know? So what are they bringing to you that you might not otherwise acknowledge? Because it's pretty, it's be, it's being really, really in your face, right? You can't miss it. So Rochelle says to me, the shadow self is like a little kid. Sometimes, sometimes, um, it's like it, it's like uh, childlike in the fact that um, there's no restraint, right? When 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 I think of a child having a temper tantrum in a store. Did you ever witness do that or did you ever do that yourself when you're a child? <laughs> I didn't. My brother did. Um, and, you know, and they're throwing themselves on the floor and they're kicking the floor and they're yelling and they're screaming, you know, crying. Very intense, intense reaction to something, usually because they couldn't get their way, usually. But, yeah, um, I suppose, you know, something like that. Lisa says, blowing my frustration into a bay leaf and then burning it. That's a good one. That's a good one. Um, and there, that's a good uh, expression, right? It's, it's getting it out. But I think, Lisa, my two cents is we need to take an, a little bit further with that. Why was it there to begin with? What caused the frustration? What was the trigger? That, that is the hint to the soul growth. What part of that touched you in a way that made you frustrated? Right? That that emotion or that feeling of frustration. The emotion is whatever is underneath it. The feeling, the frustration is the behavior it became, right? Or the thought that it became. So what was that? What was it? That's where the soul growth goes. Okay. So in that soul growth, it, it's the understanding of our shadow self. It brings us balance. So if we can see it like an ally or an aid, right? It's kind of like maybe it's connected to our GPS system, our emotional body. Right? It's connected to it because we're feeling feelings. We're acting on those feelings and behavior. So maybe it is a part of our, our, our GPS system in a way that is more like an ally. It's the balance that, that we, okay, it helps us gain the balance that we need in our lives so that we can begin our frequency, understanding the frequency that we're holding, understanding the vibration that we're holding. Because as, as light workers, as healers, we understand about being in that, that, that higher vibration of peace, love, right? About calm. We want that in our lives. We can create that in our lives. But whenever our shadow side comes around, it shows us something different. So in order for us to create the peace and the kind of life that we want, we have to deal with, learn from, balance out the things that are in our shadow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> that was just one. Oh, when I was do when I was looking up, okay, where did the shadow self, where did that phrase even come from? And I had to go back to the psychology days, right? Carl Jung. Did you know that? Carl Jung is the one who coined the phrase shadow self. He said that the shadow um, says that we can't heal our shadow, but we can understand it. We will always have a shadow self. 
And I, you know, I learned that years and years and years and years ago, right? And today I sat with it for a little bit. And, you know, and some people might actually take, um, yeah, they might not agree with him when they say that you can't heal your shadow self. The thing is, is that maybe there's nothing to really heal. Maybe it's a part of ourselves that is just a little bit out of balance. It shows us our out of balance. And once we bring it into balance, then we can integrate that, that what we learned, bringing ourselves into balance, we integrate it and it becomes a part of our wisdom. So without our, our shadow self, as humans, how I wonder how we would know what we needed to work on, what we needed to, 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 to balance out, right? What comes up to the surface makes you wonder. So maybe, you know, we all take um, some time some earth time to integrate, right? To integrate. When we take a class, like this last one that we I just taught, the journey to journey of remembering, right? I was talking to the students and saying it takes some time to integrate the things that you just remembered. And for some, that period of integration could be overnight. Others, it could take days, weeks, months, right? I'm working on seven months, eight months here, <laughs> that integration time, right? The bigger the life lesson, sometimes the longer the integration. Some people might see it like a plateau, right? There's not much happening in a plateau. It's pretty flat. <laughs> There's not, not much ge geographical relief on the horizon, right? It's pretty flat. It doesn't take much energy to be on a plateau. Yeah. So you're kind of gestating, you're kind of resting into it, right? And so in that integration of information, of that experience, evolves into our wisdom. As soon as we start applying what we learned, helping other people, creating the life that we've always wanted. That's our wisdom. That's our wisdom. So our shadow self is really, really a part of our soul growth. And, and how do we embrace something like that? When we think, when you think of your shadow self, you know, what does it look like? You know? Yeah. Think about that. What does your shadow self look like? Would you want to hug that person? <laughs> Would you want to embrace that person? Yeah. Maybe not. Maybe it might be a little hard to. But at least becoming allies. Allies. Helpers. So each time we use our shadow self to identify an out-of-balance part of ourselves, um, we can use that as a catalyst for our soul growth. We heal, I'm going to put that in air quotes, or, in, uh, or integrate that part of ourselves that's out of balance. As long as we are in a human body, we continue to grow. Learning, balancing, integrating. Some might call it healing. Some people may regard the word healing to signify something else, though. They may signify, it might mean to them that you're ill that you're sick, that you're weak, that you're wrong, that you're broken. And whenever we do that, we put ourselves into a vibration or a frequency of duality and separation. I came up with that today. <laughs> this afternoon, sitting here, taking, you know, uh, doing my show notes. Yeah. So it's not that I, I think that healing is a bad thing or a bad word or anything like that. No, but I think if we take a, a, another perspective, look at it from the other side of the room, is that we're not broken. We're not broken. 
many times we're not sick, ill, or or um, wrong either, but it's a different way of looking at it, a different way of being. That is, that is a shift in consciousness, a shift in consciousness, looking at it from a different way. So how do we, how do we do this integration to balance this growth? Most of us are already doing it. We're just kind of putting it into perspective here. Okay. So if you, if you're doing your own journaling, I'm not saying that we need to shout it out to the world. This is my shadow talking. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, in our journals, when we write about it is, is to write our truth in those journals, even though it might make us look or seem at a lower frequency or vibration, because in those moments we are, we are. So it just plain acknowledging it helps us to raise that vibration. Going, heading toward that balance. The other thing is that um, many of us have been in therapy, right? And whenever we go into therapy, when we find a really good therapist, right, and they they provide that that safe space to express ourselves, right? What we're looking for is is um, unconditional love, and most people in our lives, especially in our families where we think that that's where we should have unconditional love. That's where it should come from. And sometimes isn't. Most of the time it isn't. Because there's usually a lot of conditions added to it. Is that that's a safe place to be able to express that shadow part of ourselves, to acknowledge it, right? So that when we do balance out whatever that is, then we can, we can be with that family in a way that is more whole, that we're more whole. Yeah. The other thing that we do is we do meditation. We do meditation. So if you're asking your spiritual team to show you, clarify for you, what the heck is really going on? What is this, this, this emotion or this shadow part of myself? What is that? Why, why do I have to experience this? And go into meditation with it and sit with it quietly. Right? Because it's in that quietness that we can actually sense, feel, see, or hear that clarity. Even if it's for a few minutes. The other thing that we do, and a lot of us here in Star Nations do... <laughs> is we read a lot, right? And we take classes. And there's a lot of books and a lot of classes out there about our, our shadow self. And a lot of good teachers out there, a lot of good authors, you know, whatever resonates with you, you know, and if it works for you to help you reach for that balance, to gain that balance, then that's what you should do, right? Yeah. Maybe we should do that. Maybe we should do a post like that um, in the community and say, what good books ha have you read or used? What good classes have you taken uh, regarding um, shadow work, right? And even if you want to put it in the comments right now, if you have something that has been your go-to and it's worked for you, share it. Because I tell you what, you know, we learn so much from each other, don't we? We do. Okay, I'm going to get caught up with you guys. Um, all right, get, doo -doo -doo. all right, so Rob, Rob going with the GPS, I use Apple Maps, me too. Amy says, I want to thank you for this perfect time discussion. Oh, Amy, thank you, and I'm so glad it's helpful. I'm glad it's helpful. Rochelle says, I have always wanted to throw a temper tantrum in a restaurant, but in my fantasy, I feel embarrassed. I had that thought for years. Okay. So what would be that tantrum? What would it be about? What would be the catalyst 
what would be the the trigger right yeah because even with that because it hasn't happened but i bet you come close a couple of times rochelle <laughs> See, one of the things I think is helpful, especially for energy workers, because we're so good at this, is um, is following the stream of energy, right? Um, and so you follow the path of the energy. If it's starting here, where where did where did it come from? And you follow that path. It's just healers do this all the time, following that path. Okay, this is where it's coming from. Okay, so we can do the same thing with this. You follow the path. What was the trigger? Follow the path of that. That reminds me of this. And you go to whatever that is. And you remember that started at that point in my life. But how did that get there? And so you're following the energy path, that thread of energy back to the root the source. And sometimes it's not even in this life. Although a lot of us have done a lot of past life work. And, um, and so there might be something coming from a past life that you could, you know, work on and, and, and uh, balance out, balance out that karma. Yeah. But we're really good at that. So all we need is a starting point. So you can work that backwards. Where did that come from? Right. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Amy's laughing about Rochelle's. <laughs> Amy says, kind of like the the that movie scene from when Harry met Sally. In essence, sorta. Yeah, <laughs> the famous scene. You mean? <laughs> Rob says it comes from the solar mystery, the marital block, uh, material blocks the light of the of the god. It's allegorical. Yeah. But there, there's something to that allegory, right? Julie says, I think their anger anger triggers my anger and my anger upsets me. It's the fight or flight and I'd like to flee. That's putting it pretty clearly, Julie. It really is. It really is. So even with that, so go to the anger piece that they're, you guys are doing this mirror back and forth with the anger. But honestly, we can only work on our side of the street, right? So whatever those triggers are for you is go to the anger. What, what's underneath the anger? And for a lot of us, it's fear. So then go to the fear. What is it about the fear? What am I really afraid of? Using your team, right? What, what's this fear really about? Working your way backwards to it. And look for the trigger. Because that, that's the hint. I wish we could talk in person, Julie. I do. We're going to have to do a coffee date or something. All right. So Rob says, and as we wind on down the road, our shadow is taller than our soul. Okay. Who sung that? That's a lyric, right? Uh, Lisa says, now that's cool. Yeah, it is. It is. Uh, me and my shadow. <laughs> Clara says, when I see my shadow side, then think back on it, help me understand myself. Then I can, can show compassion when it presents itself in other people. Yes, because it helps to bring the balance, right? It brings the balance. And it shows us, it shows us where, where our, our growth is. <laughs> You're so spot on. Yay. I love that when ha that happens. Rob says, I'd like to start yelling that people are in the restaurant and I'd, I'd rather be alone. <laughs> if you're going to be irrational, go all the way. <laughs> Stairway to heaven. Ah, okay. Okay. So, um, okay. So here, here are the, the things that happen, those synchronicities for me, right? So Julie was one of them. And I happened to watch a couple of videos, YouTube videos this past week. And one of them, um, well, actually all of them, all three of them talked, had something in common. It was a thread. Um, and it was a thread where they were taking a look at value, value from different perspectives. Now, they, I think there was only one person who actually said the word value. 
But as I was watching, I was thinking, this is all the same thing. They're just coming from different directions with it. Okay. So, <clears throat> um, okay, this is my paraphrasing. In 3D, some of us see our value or success in a financial way or, a, a, you know, the worth, right? How much are you worth? And so the changing our belief or our mind, our thoughts, shifting to viewing our, our worth or our currency to what we bring to the world, right? Rather than a financial kind of way of looking at it is to look at it, what our value is, our, our innate gifts, the, key, the, the gifts that we came into this world with. And sometimes it's our shadow self that helps us to understand that clearer. Because sometimes the things that make us the most um, behavior, acting out, um, thinking, thoughts, right, is something that is trying to point us at, at a certain information. And many times it's about our self-worth. It's about how we feel about ourselves. Hmm? It's that vulnerability, right? That we don't want to show our vulnerability. But it's in our vulnerability many times is um, where our gifts are at. Yeah, I know. That one kind of... Some people I could feel, it's like, oh, God, I don't want to look at that, <laughs> you know. Um, for instance, one of my gifts is I can, I can see, feel, and sense certain kind of patterns, how energy is happening together. Um, I'm really good at figuring out jigsaw puzzles, and I'm really good at um, figuring out mysteries and those kinds of things, okay. Um, seeing, seeing different perspectives. That's a gift. But that's it also makes me vulnerable too. It does. Because sometimes um, people might see me as a know-it-all. <laughs> and I've been taught that before. Um, and so <laughs> I've been told that before. And so, um, but it also puts me in a position that because I'm a Sagittarian, I'm also very optimistic. And so that also puts me in a vulnerability. So you put those two things together and sometimes I'd be so quiet about something that I felt or that I saw, right? And I would not speak it. So I was covering up. And so when something would happen and it would be a trigger for me of about like that lady sitting in front of me. <laughs> yeah, things like that. And so it can it can actually help us to identify, to understand ourselves in a deeper way. But it also helps us to shift our beliefs. So shifting this belief about our, our currency, our value, right? Our soul value. Shifting that helps us to bring bring ourselves more solidly into the fourth dimension. Carolyn Meese was the one talking about that, that we're already in it. And how do we stay in it? We have to shift how we, what we believe in, how we see ourselves, how we value ourselves. And so that we're creating our world from a stronger place, more than just our mind. Yeah. And so we can stay in those higher dimensions for longer periods of time when we remember how to hold those frequencies, right? And that's what this is all about, is our shadow self is really helping us to remember what to balance out and what it feels like to be balanced and how we can be in those higher dimensions for longer periods of time. Until that's just where we are all the time. All right. So 
when we shift our thoughts to our gifts and we become appreciative and filled with gratitude for them, we change our frequency. We're being our soul rather than just our humanness. In 3D, that's what we are. We are just our humanness. <laughs> right? You remember that, don't you? I do. But when we shift our consciousness and that we see ourselves as a soul first, right, having this experience, that's a huge shift. It really is. When we balance our mind and our heart, we put ourselves into a position of great soul growth. We can change our lives by changing our frequency and holding it for longer and longer periods of time. That is 5D. That is 5D. And here, here's what Greg Braden said about this, right? He was saying that our ancient ancestors knew this balance. And he was putting it in a way like it was uh, hundreds of years ago, right? Well, that's not true. <laughs> I didn't agree with that part. This is thousands and thousands of years, okay? Thousands of years. And he also talked about the Native American nations, specifically the Hopi. And that the the movement, okay, um, about how they how the Hopi sees the world in themselves. It's about this balance. And as I was listening to him about this, I thought, oh, this is another good topic that you guys are going to see. <laughs> you guys are going to hear about this one. Um, but you know, the thing is, is that. If we take a look at how the movement happened about patriarchy, okay, out of Europe, thousands of years ago, Rob, you're going to like this one, thousands of years ago, it moved west. And it was taking country by country, culture by culture, changing it, right, from a matriarchy into a patriarchy. And Turtle Island happened to be one of those Western nations, lots of native nations that were changed along the way. And it just happens that the Hopi are west of the Mississippi by a long ways. So the Western expansion of the Europeans took a lot longer to get to the Hopi. Those people, those native nations living on the East Coast, you know, we, we, we dealt with that change probably around 700 years ago. Yeah. But the time frame that Greg Brain is talking about is really thousands of years. And thousands of years, if you go back that far, even Europe was in a matriarchy. Right? Yeah. So... It's all about balance. And this reminds me about the medicine wheel that we start out in the eastern door. When our soul comes in to the physical body, we're at the eastern door. And our earth walk goes from the east to the west. And that's along that line, that blue line, <laughs> that blue walk is our earth walk. And we're learning all of these lessons all along the way. And we're balancing out our mind in the east and our emotions that are in the West so that we're bringing our heart and our mind together into balance. That's what the ancients were talking about. The Kogi Mamos call it, calls it the, the language without words. They're talking about the heart. Yeah. And our spirit keeps walking. When we're done with this experience and we're no longer do, uh, doing our, our dance with our shadow selves, right, is that we walk on. We walk out of our physical body and we go back to the stars. We walk, our walk is west. See how this all kind of goes together? Love it. I love it. I love these kind of chats. <laughs> Rob, right? I know. Deanna says, ooh, food for thought. 
I know. I know. I just love it. And so Greg Brady, he's the grooviest. Yes, he was. <laughs> Lisa says, love, love, love. You make the shadow work intriguing. My gloom and doom perspective is gone. It feels lighter now. Now that's groovy. It is because it, we're, we're, we're a whole being, right? And that includes our shadow side, our shadow self. And so that shadow part of us is our ally. It's a part of us showing us what we need to balance out, what we need to do next for our soul growth. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> Rochelle says, I know. Look at that. It's the top of the hour already. Okay. Well, guys, I love, love this conversation with you and uh, learning from each other. So if you have anything that has worked for you, whether it's books, authors, um, classes, please put them in the comments. Okay. And we can all kind of take a look at them and see uh, what could be useful in our shadow work and uh, they'll be helpful. Okay. And next week, next week, um, Paul and I are going to be doing some camping, RVing. And so um, I'm going to upload probably a recorded 20 minutes, something for you guys. Um, I don't because I don't know how um, the Internet's going to be there. So we'll have to wait and see. OK. All right. So with that, with that, I wish you a very good rest of the evening. Enjoy it and the rest of the week. Um, and we'll see you back here. OK. At, uh, communications from home. Bama Mina. You guys know what that means, right? It's Potawatomi for until we see each other again. Love you guys.